I've recently noticed that battery longevity is becoming a pretty popular topic among the Reddit and Twitter Android communities. Partially due to a tweet from an Anantech writer uh, talking about fast wireless charging and how much that can degrade your battery over time. Another thing that impacts the longevity of your battery is actually how you charge the smartphone and the levels at which you allow your smartphone battery to be at. For instance, if you run your battery to zero and then just set it on a shelf for a month, two months, you know, even just two weeks, there is more damage that's being done to the battery while it's being kept at zero than if you had that battery sitting at 50%. That's why it's always advised if you are retiring a phone or a tablet or a laptop, charge the battery to about 50% and then turn it off and then put it on the shelf and it is best kept healthy in that way. So some studies have been done. Um, I will cite these and link to them in the full tutorial, which I will be linking to in the video description. Um, it's from the Battery University website, which says that keeping your smartphone battery between 20% and 80% is ideal in prolonging the longevity of said battery. So normally, smartphone OEMs, their stock ROM does not let you control the battery percentage whenever you're charging the device. So a lot of times people will just plug in their phone at the end of the day and it will charge overnight keeping the phone to 100. Even though the OEMs change that, it's not if the phone battery says 100, it's not actually 100. They reduce that to help prolong the battery itself but you can take this step even further by reducing the amount that your smartphone charges. And I want to share an application that can help you do that. It does require root access. It's called Battery Charge Limit from the developer Slash. So once we download and install that application, Again, it's going to require root access, so when we open it up, it's going to request that root access. We're just going to grant it access. So far, my experiences on compatibility has been favorable, but not complete. And the one device that it did not, uh, that it was not compatible with was the Pixel C, for whatever reason. I've used this on other, pic uh, other uh, Pixel phones. I've used this on multiple Samsung devices, Lenovo tablet. Um, it's working fine on those. So your mileage may vary on if this is, uh, application is compatible with your device. Definitely check it out to see if it is. So after we open up the app, we can actually check for the compatibility by tapping the gear icon at the top right go, so go into the settings and then select a control file and if your device is compatible at least in my experience you're gonna have a control file that can be selected here since this is a Samsung Galaxy smartphone um, it's a Galaxy S smartphone I'm going to just keep it on the default one instead of switching to the other ones um, again, your mileage may vary on compatibility. If it works, it works. If not, then you may be able to find a different application that works for you. So once that's done, we can just go back and we can go through all this stuff later. But at the main screen of this application, we have two different columns, the left side and the right side. The left side is what we are going to limit our charging to. The right side is whenever we will 
instigate the charge. So the whole idea for the most optimal battery charging pattern is to limit the, the, the battery at 80% and charge it up when it gets to 20% to not let it get below 20%. So if that's the, the uh, level you want to go to, you can set this up this way. Tap the toggle to enable the service, because by default it's not going to be enabled. So just tap the toggle to enable the service. And then again, when your battery is below 20, it will begin charging up to 80%, and then it will stop charging even though the phone is plugged in and it will continue to not charge until you hit that trigger point, which is, in this instance, 20%. This specific setup is great if you have quick access to a charger, because you're gonna want to keep that phone on the charger so it obeys these rules. This doesn't really fit my charging patterns. If I had a wireless charger, probably would be great because I would just keep it on the, the wireless charging pad. But in my charging pattern, I charge the phone at night. I let the phone stay plugged in and I'm able to optimize this with this application. So I'm going to keep the limit right here set to 80, but then I'm going to change the right column and I'm going to change that to something like 75, maybe 70, probably more like 75. So what's going to happen is the phone, whenever I plug the phone in at night or any time, it's going to check. If the battery level is under 75%, then it will allow the phone to be charged all the way up to 80%. Once it hits that 80% mark, it will stop charging until it hits this trigger point, 75%, then it will begin to charge again. So it will do a charge at the end of the night. When I plug it in, it'll charge to 80, and then throughout the night, it'll trickle down to 75, go back up to 80, trickle down to 75, go back up to 80. However many times it takes to get through the night or whenever I unplug the phone. This is the type of setup that I prefer because it matches my charging pattern, but you can set this up to match your charging pattern that might be best for you. I know whenever I plug in, whenever I have the, the phone plugged in, it will have a notification that will pop out that will say, tap this service to disable. So a lot of people, it's great at the start of the morning Whenever they wake up, they notice the phone is at 80. Well, a lot of people want to start the day at 100%. Even though it's not ideal, some people need it for maybe a much more active day. So if that's the case, in the morning you can wake up, tap that notification to disable the battery charge limit service. That will allow the phone to charge up to the full 100%. So yeah, I really like this battery charge limit application. It allows me to keep the battery at optimal levels. And I just switched to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, the Exynos version, so that I could root it. And I'm hoping that that will let me keep the battery healthy for longer and I won't have to upgrade in two or three years.